every app you use whatsapp uber netflix runs on hidden conversations behind the scenes your phone and servers are constantly talking negotiating and exchanging data but here is the twist they don't all speak the same language some speak rest some use graphql others rely on grpc web sockets or even lightweight protocols like mqtt for iot devices and yes even old school soap still shows up in banking and enterprise systems these are called api protocols the secret language of the internet in this video we'll uncover the top api protocols that make your apps talk why they exist and when to use each one let's get started before we start quick heads up guys in case you missed my recent announcement i just launched my system design mastery beta course and enrollment closes in just 5 days this isn't a bunch of random theory it's the kind of practical real world system design knowledge i wish i had in my career with the unlimited plan you'll get lifetime access to every new update future modules and bonus content not just for system design but also for all our upcoming courses on cybersecurity dsa cloud and more launching early next year only a few seats are left and hundreds of engineers are already in so if you are serious about leveling up check the link in the description and grab your spots before they are gone all right let's begin with the workhorse of the internet rest when you open the uber app and check your ride history the app sends a rest request like this the server responds with a json object containing all the details driver car pickup drop fare ratings and so on and so forth even if the app only needs two or three of those fields that's the beauty of rest almost every developer knows it and that's why companies like twitter github stripe and google maps still rely heavily on rest apis but rest has its downsides it often sends too much data or requires multiple requests to stitch things together take netflix for example imagine building a home page that shows a user's profile info their personalized movie recommendations and trending shows in their region with rest you might need to hit three different endpoints user recommendations and trending that means multiple round trips slower load times and wasted bandwidth enter graphql graphql flips this model instead of server dictating what comes back the client asks for exactly what it needs so netflix could query everything in the single request the response just the fields requested in one round trip no extra noise and that's why facebook who co-created graphql shopify github and even paypal have adopted it for mobile apps especially graphql is a lifesaver less data over the network faster responses and fewer battery draining calls so here is the trade off rest is simple stable and supported everywhere great for public apis or when you want predictability graphql is flexible and efficient perfect when clients have diverse data needs or when bandwidth is tight like in mobile or iot both are about fetching data from server to client but rest is like ordering a fixed meal while graphql is like building your own plate at a buffet now some apps don't just want data once in a while they need a live conversation and that's where real time protocols come in take whatsapp or slack when you send a message you expect it to pop up instantly on your friend screen if these apps use plain rest the client would have to constantly poll the server any new messages any now what about now and that's wasteful and slow instead they use web sockets a web socket starts with a normal http handshake then upgrades into a persistent connection from that moment the server and client can talk to each other freely like a phone call instead of sending letters and that's how slack whatsapp discord or even trading apps like robinhood deliver real time updates the server can push messages price updates or alerts the moment they happen no waiting but not every real time need requires full two way communication sometimes you just want a server to client stream and that's where server send events or ssc shine think of youtube live comments or live stock tickers the client opens a http connection and the server just keeps streaming updates down that pipe one way only but super efficient for continuous feeds so the trade off here is web sockets are full duplex perfect for chats games or collaborative apps like google docs ssc is simpler great when the server needs to push events 
but the client doesn't need to send much back. Both go beyond rest. Instead of fetching data, they enable living, breathing connections between clients and servers. Now, so far we have looked at protocols that connect apps with servers or stream data in real time. But what about the hidden world inside large systems, where microservices talk to each other? Imagine Netflix. Behind that play button isn't one giant server, but thousands of microservices. One for recommendations, one for billing, one for streaming, and one for subtitles. The services need to talk to each other fast and with low latency. REST might be too chatty in some situations, because JSON is bulky. And that's why Netflix and Uber use gRPC. gRPC is built on HTTP2 and uses protocol buffers or protobuf instead of JSON. Protobuf encodes data into compact binary format, making it smaller and faster. It also supports streaming. So instead of waiting for a bond response, you can send a stream of requests or get a stream of results. For example, Uber uses gRPC to connect its dispatching microservices, handling millions of driver rider matches in real time. Google built gRPC and it's now a backbone for many cloud native systems. But what if you don't need immediate responses and you want services to communicate asynchronously? And that is where messaging protocols like AMQP and MQTT shine. Take RabbitMQ, which implements AMQP. It lets you send a message to broker and the broker delivers it to whoever is listening. This decouples services. For example, in an e-commerce system, the order service publishes an order placed event. The payment service, inventory service and notification service all consume that event independently. If one system is slow or temporarily offline, the broker retries later. No lost messages. And then there is MQTT a lightweight publish-subscribe protocol designed for IoT devices. Think of smart bulbs, wearables, connected cars. These devices can't afford heavy payloads. MQTT keeps things minimal, just a few bytes overhead. Perfect for millions of tiny devices chatting with Central Hub. For example, Facebook Messenger's chat system once used MQTT under the hood to handle millions of mobile connections efficiently. And today, MQTT powers countless IoT platforms from Tesla cars to smart homes. For modern apps and IoT, lightweight protocols like MQTT solve today's challenges. When we talk about API protocols, REST, gRPC, GraphQL, WebSockets, they all have one thing in common. They expose powerful services. But with power comes a big challenge, secure and reliable access. It doesn't matter if you are building a machine learning API on Kubernetes or exposing internal services to your team. If access isn't secure, the protocol choice alone won't save you. And this is where modern zero trust solutions like TwinGate come in. Say you have deployed a custom LLM API inside your Kubernetes cluster. Maybe it's a fine-tuned model that answers domain-specific questions or an internal chatbot that your teams want to try out. You don't want to expose it to the entire internet because that would mean opening ports on your cluster and potentially inviting attacks. Now, you would like your teammates to test the API from their laptops at home or even from a different office location. Normally, you would face three painful options. Set up a VPN and manage user accounts, which gives them more network access than they need. Expose the API service through port forwarding, which creates a visible entry point to the outside world. Or juggle temporary tokens and cube configs, which are messy to manage and risky if they leak. With TwinGate, the process becomes clean and secure. You define that API endpoint in the TwinGate admin console as a protected resource. Invite your teammates with their existing identity provider logins and the connector handles the secure routing. When your teammates run their test, they connect straight to the LLM API. No ports exposed, no VPN overhead, and no extra network visibility. They only reach that one API service, nothing else in your cluster. But if we rewind a bit, before REST, before GraphQL, even before gRPC, the enterprise world was running on SOAP or Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP uses XML for every message, wrapped with strict rules. It's heavier than REST, but comes with built-in standards for security, transactions, and reliability. That's why it became the default for industries where guarantees matter more than simplicity. For example, banks and insurance companies still rely on SOAP for payment gateways and fund transfer. Airline reservation systems also use SOAP because of its transactional integrity. If you are booking a flight, you don't want a half-completed transaction. So even though it feels old school, SOAP isn't dead. 
in finance, healthcare, and enterprise systems, it still plays a big role. So, now you have seen the hidden languages that power our apps. The rest is simple and universal, used by Twitter, GitHub, Stripe. Whereas GraphQL is flexible and efficient, powering Facebook, Shopify, GitHub, WebSocket, and SSE. They are real-time protocols behind WhatsApp, Slack, YouTube Live. GRPC is lightning-fast microservice communications at Netflix, Uber, and Google. AMQP is reliable async messaging used in e-commerce and finance. MQTT is lightweight protocol for IoT powering Tesla, wearables, and smart homes. And SOAP is legacy but still alive in banking and airline systems. Each protocol exists because one size doesn't fit all. The next time you book a ride, send a text, or stream a show, remember, it's these protocols making your apps talk. And in the future, we'll see even more with AI agents, edge devices, and new standards pushing the boundaries of how systems communicate.